Throughout time, music, poetry, and art have affected change in the minds and hearts of people, from Bob Dylan's Blowing in the Wind and the Times They Are a-Changing to John Lennon's Give Peace a Chance and Imagine, artists have sought to raise the consciousness of the masses towards a peaceful, harmonious existence among all people. Gays and lesbians have always been a strong force in the arts. Today, more are rising to the forefront to promote greater visibility and acceptance through their art. I'm your host, Eileen Karn, and on this edition of Forward and Out, I'm proud to introduce to you one of Westchester's own, poet and musician Marty LeWinter. He's joined now by Julie Edmonds in a performance of his song, The Other Disease. Marty, that was beautiful. Thanks. Very provoking. Thanks very much. How did you come to write it? Uh, I looked around at all the hate in America uh, against uh, gays, lesbians, and I figured that when people walk around the street saying, well, this one's a faggot and this one's a queer, 
don't they realize they really could be insulting their sons, their brothers, uh, when someone walks down the street and points to a lesbian and says, L look at the dyke, well, that person could be insulting his aunt, uh, mm -hmm. a neighbor, a kind teacher, uh, whoever. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I had to put what I felt into words. Um, the kind of uh, homophobia that AIDS evoked, instead of evoking sympathy with the right. poor, sick people, when I heard people say things like, well, this is God's punishment to those damn homosexuals, mm. uh, I realized that we had to do something about it, and I think that a song might be a way to reach someone's heart. Right. And the bigotry, um, I especially liked at the end when you're, you know, making a call, the American is apple pie, that it, in fact we're all in it together, and then if we accept our legacy of freedom and and uh, understanding for everybody, that even the heterosexual community has to, um, you know, take us hand mm -hmm. in hand for our rights. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. That's beautiful. very observant of you. That that's really a very important uh, part of the message. Uh, I stayed in the song. We have to fight for the victim of gay bashing goons, and I'm I'm trying to remind Americans that after they come for me, well, they're going to come for you for mm -hmm. a different reason. They might not like you because you have long hair, or because you're wearing an earring, or because you're an African American, or because you're Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, the hater will always find reasons to hate, and mm -hmm. all Americans have to unite, and we have mm -hmm. to defend uh, all the marginal groups that are in danger. Mm -hmm. To me, also, it suggested um, how powerful the nuclear family is. You know that we, um, children learn hate from their parents, mm. and that um, that's the disease that could be stamped out now. Isn't that the yeah. truth? Very beautiful song. Oh, thanks. How did you develop as an artist? Have you always been into music and poetry? Well, I started playing guitar when I was 12 years 12 old. 12 years old. And uh, music lessons couldn't dampen my enthusiasm for the instrument. <laughs> and uh, then uh, uh, I listen to, as you mentioned in your very fine intro, uh, I was influenced very much by people like Bob Dylan, people mm -hmm. like John Lennon, um, and I started to realize that the guitar really is an instrument, not just of art, but it is, it is an instrument that can help me carry a message across. Mm -hmm. um, recently, in May, I just got a Master of Fine Arts in Composition, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been writing songs well, like this one. I wrote a musical with that song, Woman, which we'll play later ah, in the program, great. and uh, slowly but surely, I'm beginning to find that uh, the way I can reach people most effectively, I think, is through music and through poetry. Through music, yeah. Walt Whitman is one of your uh, inspirations, too. My hero. Well, yeah. Any particular work of his that you really like? Uh, I like a lot of his works. I, I particularly enjoyed O Captain, My Captain, which was a memorial to, uh, that he wrote shortly after the death of Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, he wrote many, many songs about America, about its strength, its diversity, about all the people. And uh, Whitman was not an elitist. He didn't talk about the rich, the powerful. He talked about everyone, mm -hmm. the worker uh, coming home from the steel factory, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, uh, the, poor, uh, the poor, the wretched, the unfortunate. And Whitman gave America a voice that it so urgently needed. Mm -hmm. No, that's beautiful. I thought we'd um, have you uh, read some of your poetry now. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first one you have is uh, To My Love. Mm -hmm. If you'll please mm -hmm. give us that and we can talk about it after. Yeah. These glasses will make me look very extinguished, uh, <laughs> distinguished. <laughs> okay. Um, to My Love. Deprive us no longer, for our love is stronger than your fears of the eyes and ears of others or of your brothers. Not to nature or a man, nor to some wicked divine plan, is it construed to be a sin. Break this barrier. Be not a carrier of societal doubt. Rather, let that scoundrel out, and through that same door, let me in. Okay. So you're addressing that to a, a gay fellow? Uh, yes. Someone who's um, questioning their identity or uh, feeling the weight of society's pressure and oppression. Yes. This was someone I was very much in love with, um, who was also very much in love with me. Um, he was really afraid to go ahead. Um, and I wrote this poem out of sympathy, but it is also a strong poem. It's a very political poem, and I'm sending a message with this it's poem. It's a challenge there. Yeah. Um, I really, really think that many, many millions of people all over the world um, suppress their sexuality, and they become so miserable, so unhappy, so frustrated. There are the people that, that murder, that steal, that uh, the social misfits, if you like, the people that on Saturday night are causing fights in bars instead of just enjoying a beer, enjoying their friends, enjoying being with a lovey-dovey. <laughs> uh, they have to go around making life miserable for the rest of us, and I think sexual frustration, romantic frustration, is at the core. Um, so many millions of people would right now come out of the closet if societal pressure would let up. 
Mm -hmm. And this is another message we have to send to American society. When they use these hate words, uh, fag, queer, dyke, etc., etc., they're causing the young to, to be afraid of mm -hmm. themselves. They're causing self-hatred, self-loathing mm -hmm. in so many people, and they're preventing a, a very natural process, and that the process of expressing one's love. So in this poem I say, be not a carrier of that societal doubt. Let that scoundrel out. Mm -hmm. And through that same door, let me in. Now, that's the poetic twist, the hook, if you like. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the message, I hope, is very clear. The message is, come out of the closet. Closets are for clothes. <laughs> that's good. Another selection from Where Springs Your Pride okay. um, you brought today to read to us. All right. Now, here there's a contrast. Paragraph one, or the way it could be, paragraph two. Okay. Unafraid because you're unaware of a threat? Do you mock death because you haven't seen it yet? Defy you the foe from safe castle wall? Climb only when the net catches your fall? Are you the confident master of routine? Smiling because your world hasn't been cold and mean? Untested, untried, from where springs your pride? If from good looks or youth, then heed well this truth. To see the threat, yet to double your bet, to stare death in the face and remain in the race, fighting your foe in his domain, scaling the cliff though they call you insane, to shun routine and master the new, to bravely smile when they've made fun of you. So sing your battle cry out loud and earn for yourself the right to be proud. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's really talking about um, self-acceptance and sort of stepping up to the line mm -hmm. that you're not going to be held back. Yeah. What, how did that poem evolve? You I was thinking about, I think it was kind of personal. Um, I was wondering about the, about the courage we need, gays and lesbians and bisexuals, the courage we need just to live, um, mm -hmm. to smile when they've made fun of you, to not turn bitter, to try to be brave. To, you see, it's easy, for example, to be gay in a college that has a big gay lesbian organization. Um, a college is supposedly the home of tolerance and bigotry. It's very hard to fight the foe in his domain. Can I be gay in Brooklyn, in Staten Island, mm -hmm. in Westchester, mm -hmm. in downtown White Plains? Um, and this is a message of courage to people. Um, earn this pride. Uh, we talk about gay pride. Uh, it has to be earned. And mm -hmm. one way to earn it is to get out there and fight the foe, fight the bigot in the bigot's domain. We have to take the fight to the suburbs, not just the inner cities. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be brave. We have to earn that pride. And then we can sing that battle cry out loud. Right. When you were talking about the liberal academic environment, you were speaking from your own experience, too. You're a professor at uh, SUNY Purchase. Mm -hmm. Well, as we sometimes call it, SUNY Poor Choice, because <laughs> oh, of the no. salaries that uh, we're getting oh, over there. Oh, Poor Choice for the so faculty. Poor Choice, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, nevertheless, it's a good environment for you, and it's uh, yes. been good for your art, too. Alive. It's uh, nurturing. Uh, the SUNY Purchase campus is full of really, really gifted uh, students and faculty. Uh, a lot of fine programs in the arts. Uh, I happen to teach mathematics, but uh, mm -hmm. well, I even find a little bit of art there. Mm -hmm. um, at Purchase, that's where I did my Master of Fine Arts, by the way. They permitted me to do that. I get, I'm entitled to one free course per term. Well, these are boring details. Uh, <laughs> but the, <laughs> but the, it allowed you to do it. But it did. Uh, academia still is a, a shelter for the pursuit of truth and beauty. Mm -hmm. um, if I worked in downtown Manhattan, I'd constantly ha be having to produce for profit. Mm -hmm. I'd have to produce mathematical ideas that sell, that, that uh, motivate finance and industry. Mm -hmm. At SUNY Purchase, I can write a mathematical article a theoretical article. Um, I can be a poet, I can be a guitarist, mm -hmm. um, and I can circulate in an atmosphere where people try to stay open-minded. I saw a bumper sticker the other day, uh, minds are like parachutes, they only work when they're open. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, and, uh, and you have that yep. and colleges an academic are, environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And colleges are the last hope of America, I think. Um, from the colleges, I hope a message springs forth to all of society, that truth and beauty matter, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we should be very open-minded with people. There's no room for bigotry. There's no room for prejudice. Just like the research scientist who goes into the lab has to be careful that her data is correct. So we have to be careful when we walk in society that we evaluate people correctly, mm -hmm. that we don't give in to these prejudices, that we approach everybody with an open mind, uh, uh, a Latino, an African-American, a gay, a lesbian, a Jew. We have to look at these people and without preconceived notions, without the hate-filled uh, stereotypes that, mm -hmm. that are drilled into our heads all the time. Right, yeah. And the college campus is good for that, although, and in, in the folk tradition and in the uh, social movement tradition, the colleges have always been important. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. so that goes to your point, if it keeps up. Mm -hmm. um, how about math and music? That's quite a, um, some people have thought of uh, the mathematical aspect of music mm -hmm. as being, um, you know, the direction. Has that mm -hmm. helped you? Is that, is, do you see your 
your mathematics knowledge? Frankly, not at the conscious level. Not I, at the I conscious have to keep level. the two separate. So uh -huh. when I'm playing guitar, I can't think of quadratic equations. Uh -huh. um, on the other hand, though, uh, subconsciously, there's something cerebral going on in the mind of the mathematician and the mind of the musician. Yes. That there's a very strong overlap. The mathematician thinks about quantity and measure, and the musician, in a way, does too. Uh, a chord has certain notes in it, certain triads that are combined a certain way. Scale passages have a very deeply mathematical foundation. Mm -hmm. But I do try to keep the two separate. Right, yeah. Um, the song uh, Woman is part of a larger piece, is that correct? That you're yes. working on now, or is that a work in progress? Um, well, uh, I finished that last May. It was for my MFA, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called The Trial of Earth. Uh, happens a couple of hundred years in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. We become a nuclear space power, so the Galactic Federation um, mm -hmm. notifies us and they tell us we're going to be put on trial. They've been recording everything we've been doing for the past thousands of years. If, we, if they deem us unfit to have nuclear weapons in space, they will destroy the planet. Uh, oh. And we have to send a delegation to their planet to stand trial. Mm -hmm. um, the prosecutor there uh, has his choice of uh, ways in which to indict us. And among the three things he chooses is the way we've treated women for the past several thousand years. How women have constantly been put down, told your place is in the home, just cook and clean and go to church and raise the kids. Um, uh, that's, and, and, and it gets worse. Uh, murder, rape, uh, pillaging. Um, uh, women have to, I think, today live in constant fear. Mm -hmm. uh, a woman at 10 p.m. in Manhattan who goes to mm -hmm. buy a pack of cigarettes and leaves her house has to look around and, and worry, well, you know, where's the rapist? Uh, where's the, uh, mm -hmm. who's going to do her violence? Uh, as you know, date rape across America, the statistics are absolutely horrendous. And uh, I personally think that is one of the most indicting factors against uh, humankind, the way we treat those people who gave us our lives, mm -hmm. mothers, the, the givers of life. Right. Um, I also think that in particular on this program it is a very appropriate thing to discuss because I think women and gays have the same oppressor, the same macho man who's going to say faggot and maybe beat up a gay is more than likely to is more than likely the type that disrespects women. Mm -hmm. He's the potential date rapist. He's the potential wife beater. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there, there's a common enemy. And I think there's a cure for this. We have to educate our young. We have to teach the, the young males what it means to be strong. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it doesn't mean hit the other guy over the head or knock him down on the football field and that shows you're tough. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, or score with women so you can put another notch on your dashboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had a date last night and I got something. You know, the, the locker room talk in the high schools. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, we it's all about uh, power over mm. and possession, mm. acquisition. Absolutely. I think women have to be empowered too because oh. um, psychology of the oppressed being what it is, you know, women buy into it for so much, you know, so that uh, I think the male macho stereotype is also, um, mm -hmm. has its counter in ingrained uh, thinking that women have about themselves. Good so point. there's got to be some empowerment there. I think it's such a pity that we give uh, medals in wartime to people, uh, and, and they sometimes do deserve these medals. There are people who act very heroically on the battlefield. Uh, there are stories of men who've jumped on grenades to save all their friends. Um, but we don't give enough medals to women, uh, what they do, uh, from morning to night under peacetime conditions. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time, as you know, when the child mortality rate, the mortality rate of childbirth was 50%. And yet women had the courage to go ahead and conceive and bring babies into the world at such terrible personal risk. Mm -hmm. um, women in the wild... Did they have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Sometimes no. Birth control, actually, uh -huh. <laughs> came, uh -huh. came to our aid there. Mm, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, but so many women uh, did bravely go forth and um, uh, the, look at the first women who fought for the right to vote. Mm -hmm. The women who first knocked down the hallowed halls of academia and said, let us in too. Um, Madame Curie was not allowed to read her scientific paper before the academy. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, really, the, the treatment, the more you think about it, the more incense you get. And I am in total agreement with you that women have to have more power. Uh, we mm -hmm. have to see more women in political office, in, in the military, mm -hmm. um, in uh, academia, in all walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, standing side by side, enjoying nothing less than full equality with men. Mm -hmm. uh, that may engender more respect in society, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Are there other projects that you're uh, working on now? Or what's the future for uh, Marty Lewinder? Well, um, 
I think I have enough degrees to put in my office. So, <laughs> so uh, no more academic degrees no, for the I, moment. Huh? Yeah, really. I think that MFA was literally a terminal degree. <laughs> um, I think what I'd really like to do now very much is put all my artistic energy into the, the gay and lesbian movement uh, via, again, the mediums of poetry and song. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to fight very, very hard in, in uh, my way, the only way I really can. Uh, I don't have money. I, I don't have that kind of clout where I can donate $10,000 to the um, to some uh, gay organization, but mm -hmm. I can certainly put my time and energy mm -hmm. into the movement. Well, you work at the loft. You're quite an active volunteer there. Huh. Yeah, that's an important part of our work. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to thank you very much for being on the show today. It was great. My pleasure. Beautiful work and a real inspiration to all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to hear now again from uh, Marty LeWinter and Julie Edmonds performing Marty's composition, Woman. Thanks for watching Forward and Out. Please send your comments and questions to us at Forward and Out, Care of the Loft, P.O. Box 1513, White Plains, New York, 10602, or call the helpline at 914-948-4922. You can also ask a helpline volunteer about becoming a member of the Loft. Please support your Gay and Lesbian Community Services Center. It supports you. Stay tuned for the Lofts Community Bulletin Board directly following the closing credits of this show. Thanks. Until next time, be proud. <laughs>